All right, so here's our next rhythm challenge. Again, stating name the following rhythm and choose the best answer. So we have A, normal sinus rhythm, B, first degree AV block, C, junctional rhythm, or D, idioventricular rhythm. Okay, so why don't you take a moment, pause the video, go through it, try to choose the best answer, and then we'll walk through this together. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to kind of go through this and get and make a good uh, guess here. So let's look at each of these answer choices and then see why the answer choices that is correct is correct. Okay, so again, just to orient ourselves, we have rhythm strips that are taken from a standard 12 lead ECG. So you have both lead two and V1, lead two an inferior limb lead. And remember V1, one of those right-sided precordial leads that give us a great um, ax, short axis view of the heart, okay? Especially the atria. These are the best leads to look at when you're looking for any atrial abnormalities, okay? Where we look at the P waves. So let's look at each one of these here, all right? So again, we're only given two leads and just to remind you this is in large version just to help you see the smaller squares if you need okay to help with the rhythm um, or finding the rate but what I want you to do is go through each one of these and we'll do that here and see why it is correct or not okay so choice A is normal sinus rhythm again we only have two leads right but normally in these leads in leads two okay we will see upright so in leads two upright P waves in those leads. Remember, the normal P wave axis in sinus rhythm is about positive 60 degrees, all right? And in the anterior plane, all right, or horizontal plane, when we look at the precordial leads, in V1, we can see sometimes these biphasic P waves, okay? In which these biphasic P waves have a positive and then negative deflection, okay? So that's normal, positive then negative. All right, meaning this is positive and negative. This represents right atrial depolarization, this left atrial depolarization. Now what I want you to notice here is that there are in fact no P waves, okay? So no P waves are present throughout. You can see some of this here that you may think, oh, maybe there's a P wave there, but again, remember, look below. Do you see any P waves, okay? Clearly no P waves, all right? So that can be some artifact there. So no P waves present, right? And in sinus rhythm, we need P waves, okay? So choice A is not correct, all right? So that's easy to uh, take off. Now with first degree AV block, remember this is when you have prolongation, so an increase in the PR interval. Remember, normal PR interval in adults, and again, we assume we're dealing with an adult patient until, until or unless told otherwise. So here's an adult patient. Normal PR interval is between 120 and 200 milliseconds. So once you get over 200 milliseconds, and then it's constantly prolonged, okay, with no dropped beats, we consider this first degree uh, AV block, okay? So if you look here, we don't see that. And remember, the PR interval, if you just remember, right, here's our normal complex is a P wave, QRS complex, or RS, right? Because here's an R wave and then an S wave. And this is a T wave. The PR intervals from this portion, the beginning of a P wave, up until the beginning of our QRS complex, okay? So this portion there, that's our PR interval. Now, notice that the P wave makes up the PR interval and so does the PR segment, meaning that the PR interval equals the P wave plus the PR segment, okay? So we said, as we looked at the normal sinus rhythm, that there's no P wave present, so there can be no PR interval and we're not dealing with any AV blocks here without that. So again, no P waves, no first degree AV block. Okay, now the last two actually don't have to have any P waves. Sometimes you can have a complete heart block and escape junctional or idioventricular rhythm and see P waves there. But in these cases, when they're just seen alone, you don't see any P waves. So both of these have no P waves. Okay, so that's one clue. And we've already saw that there's no P waves present here. The other thing is how you want to differentiate these two is by looking at the interval of the QRS complex, okay? Meaning what is the duration from the beginning of our QRS complex 
to the end of it. Okay, notice there there's two small boxes, which is about 80 milliseconds. The normal QRS interval should be less than 120 milliseconds. Okay, often we consider it between 70 and 110 to be normal. So you can see that this is about 80 milliseconds. And if you look at the next one, okay, same thing. So if you look throughout these, there's a normal QRS interval duration. So what we see here is a normal QRS duration here with these junctional rhythms. However, with idioventricular rhythms, we see an increase in the QRS duration. Okay, so we're already starting to see what the answer is because we said here we have a normal QRS duration, which is a junctional rhythm. And that's actually the answer choice here. So idioventricular rhythm, you have these wide complexes, uh, QRS complexes, no P waves, and the rate is typically between 20 and 40 beats per minute, okay? Whereas with junctional rhythm, the rate is between 40 and 60 beats per minute, okay? So let's just find the rate to confirm that we're dealing with this junctional rhythm, and in fact, it's not D, all right? Remember that the standard ECG, which we're dealing with, from beginning all the way to end, and we keep emphasizing this, is 10 seconds, okay? Multiply that by six, you get 60 seconds, okay, which is one minute. So what you want to do is count the complexes going across, all right, in this case, we can count the QRS complexes because they're the most evident here, all right? We'll put that there, multiply it by six, and get an estimate of the rate in beats per minute, okay? So let's do that here. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have 10 times six is about 60 beats per minute, okay? So the uh, rate here is clearly above that 40 range of the idioventricular rhythm, okay? We already saw we have normal QRS duration, no P waves, and right there within that limit, okay? So we would call this a junctional rhythm, okay? Now with these junctional rhythms, the normal one, so this is junctional rhythm between 40 and 60 is what we expect. Now, if you had something less than 40 beats per minute, so less than 40 beats per minute, you would call that a junctional bradycardia, okay? If it's 40 to 60, as we saw here, this is junctional rhythm, okay? If it's between 60 and 100 beats per minute, we call this accelerated junctional rhythm. And then if it's over 100 beats per minute, we call this junctional tachycardia, just like any fast rhythm, okay? So those are just some nomenclature that you'll want to know uh, to differentiate different types of junctional rhythm, okay? Fortunately, we didn't have to know all that. All we had to know is that we had narrow complexes, no P waves. We had a regular rhythm. Remember, this is a regular rhythm, and that's something you see with uh, these rhythms here with junctional and idioventricular and sinus rhythms normally, okay? Regular rhythm, meaning that our intervals between each complex is the same. So one R wave to the next, that's what we call the R to R interval. And if you measured each one out, okay, you would see that they are all the same, okay? So again, here's one R wave to the top of the next one. That interval is the same as the one that follows there, okay? And then follows the next and so forth. So the normal intervals make that a regular rhythm, okay? So again, the best choice here, and you notice there's no P waves, normal Q restoration, and our rate around 60 beats per minute, and this is a regular rhythm, okay? So we just add that here for you. So the best choice here is junctional rhythm. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something.